Hi, my name is Alexa Foyja and this is the physics of painting. Our brains and eyes work together to help us see colors. Objects do not have color. The color that objects are is the light that is reflected off their surfaces. If we are looking at a green leaf, white light hits its surface and only reflects the green light. All the other colors of light are absorbed. Now let's get into additive color mixing. This is a color wheel that not many people are used to seeing. This is an additive color mixing wheel, which is where different lines of different wavelengths are mixed. Color is a part of light, and light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Light has both properties of particles and wavelengths. The different colors occur because of different lengths of wavelength. The violet ends of the spectrum occur at 400 nanometers of the wavelength and the red edge of the spectrum occur when the wavelengths are 700 nanometers. With additive color mixing, when equal parts of the three primary colors of the additive color mixing, as you can see on the color wheel, red, green, and blue are combined, white light is created. When red and green light is combined, it makes yellow light. When green and blue light is combined, it makes cyan light. And when red and blue light is created, mixed, it creates magenta light. While it may not seem important to mix light when painting, it actually comes in very handy when you're learning how to paint. In painting, the opposite of additive color mixing is used. Subtractor color, subtractive color mixing is used to make different paints and pigments used in paintings. The primary colors of subtractive paint mixing are blue, red, and yellow. When combined all together, all the waves of white light of the spectrum are absorbed, and if mixed correctly, black is created. When paint is hit with white light, it absorbs its complementary color and reflects the rest of the spectrum. When white light hits yellow pigment, the blue light is absorbed. The red and green light is reflected and is going, and going back to subtractive color mixing, the red and green light combine to create yellow light. And that is how we see yellow paint as yellow. If we want to make green paint, we take yellow paint, where again, the blue light is absorbed and the red and green light are reflected and combined, which make yellow light. Then we add blue, where now the red light is also absorbed and green is the only light that reflects through. So here we have green. Many aspects of art and physics go hand in hand. Another technique that is directly involved in physics is accidental painting, which has to do with fluid dynamics. David Alfaro Seguero discovered accidental painting by combining paint with different densities. When the paints with different densities were layered on top of each other, the different densities caused them to spread into each other in different ways and create beautiful designs as shown here. Different pigments between the paints created different densities. Paints created with natural substances and chemical substances created the different densities which helped them be able to spread into each other and create many of the designs that are seen here. Using different liquids and different colors, create, uh, the sequeros create the different patterns. When placed on top of each other, the paints of different densities created the Raleigh-Taylor instability, which is when a battle between densities occurs. Depending on their viscosity and density, they mix and create different patterns. In conclusion, although art and physics seem very different, they have been used together all throughout history. Physicists have always been using 
art to visualize what they can't see. An artist who avoids using physics to make the most out of all their materials and techniques. This can be seen all the way back to the Renaissance era, when Leonardo da Vinci used drawings, sketches of things he saw and what he wanted to create, all the way up to more contemporary, uh, more modern day art with um, the popular style of many artists' mobiles. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a little bit more about art and physics today.